Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Things are definitely getting more and more tense here, guys, here. Uh, we, I, I've seen this report already, and I wanted to share this with you. This is on uh, Donetsk Novosti on their particular Twitter page here. They are sharing with us here the, uh, how would you call this, the Tolka U. It is a Russian-made uh, ballistic missile system. Six of these have been moved uh, up very, very close to the Donetsk region there by uh, Kiev, uh, the uh, Ukraine's government. They've been uh, moved there to uh, Abiduk, uh, which is the little city just north of Donetsk. This is where all the fighting has been going on. This city, by the way, is a neutral city. They're in the middle of the uh, demilitarized, demilitarized zone there. And this is where uh, Kiev has moved their forces there, launching the offensive uh, on the uh, Donetsk People's Republic, the Luhansk People's Republic. All along the contact line, there has been fierce fighting. Uh, it has started up again this weekend. But guys, this missile system here is completely, the Minsk agreements are off. I mean, it's obvious. It's very obvious the Minsk agreements are off. Let me give you an idea of what this type of missile is so you can kind of see it in action. I want you guys to be able to know exactly what the citizens of Donetsk Republic there are, are faced with. And, and they are Ukrainians as well. This is the sad thing. Although this is a breakaway region, and the reason it's a breakaway region is because these people here are, for the most part, they are, uh, they are Russian uh, people to begin with and uh, so their lives are at risk children especially take a look at just how serious this is six of these were moved there right there outside the outskirts of Donetsk and there's no other place that this is going to be used on except a civilian population take a look at this here this is a video footage here this is an older one there uh, Medvedava uh, that's the very city, by the way, that this missile system was moved to. Now, this is not the actual photos now. This is something I found on YouTube to give you an idea of the seriousness of this type of missile system. This is a very, very serious system here that they are using. Uh, and unfortunately, friends, it's not going to be good for the uh, Donetsk People's Republic there. That is major artillery right there. And when these bombs here land, uh, they take out entire buildings. This is not something that's just going to go in there and, and uh, punch a hole in the wall there and kill a few people. This is a very major uh, escalation of the violence. Uh, and again, as it has been already, and even one of Ukraine's own journalists have written, I wish I had his article up here, uh, I was having a little bit of battery problem earlier with our, with our laptop, forgot the power cord at the office there. Uh, I mean, at the house and uh, from this weekend. But anyway, uh, there is, it's become very serious. And, you know, it's like, what's going to happen next? I think Russia has realized that this is a situation spiraling out of control very rapidly. And Russia as well is preparing for this. Uh, an emergency statement uh, by the Donetsk People's Republic. This is the head commander right here that you see on your screen now. Uh, and he does make a statement uh, about the escalation of violence and how that all the uh, Minsk agreements have been thrown out the door. And he also mentions the, the movement of this particular missile system. Uh, it's in the article right here. They, do, they did see this uh, using their little limited uh, abilities there. Uh, they were able to see that these type of uh, missile systems have been moved up to the Donetsk uh, region. It says right here, two tactical missile complexes, the Toku-U, came from Kramtorska locality to a territory of uh, Avadik, excuse me, Ad, Avadika uh, at the Coca-Cola plant, that is, is what he's saying, and in uh, Nova Bermudka, a railway station six, the Tovka U complexes were unloaded and sent to perform tasks. Six of them in all have been sent there. I don't know if, that, if he is aware of that as far as when they made this statement. This was made over the weekend. 
uh, that, that uh, as far as the, uh, the head leader, the general that is uh, running the Donetsk People's Republic uh, military operation inside of uh, the Donetsk region there. Uh, another interesting uh, photograph here I'd like to share with you. It's already been circled on here. Russia and Canada, Ukraine tanks hiding behind civilian structures in uh, Advika. Ukraine must stop military provocations and implement the Minsk Agreement. I agree with what the guy is saying here. But here's what he's pointing out right here. You're, you're at an apartment complex. You have one tank sitting there, another tank sitting there, another tank sitting right here. Uh, and of course, people's private vehicles parked here. Uh, and, you know, by the way, a lot of the people, uh, well, I won't go into that right now, something else altogether. I need, need to have the information up there. Uh, anyway, Russia, though, seems to be moving forces to the Ukrainian border. Uh, now, that's alleged at this point here. I do believe that they probably are. Uh, so even though I'm going to have to say it's an alleged case as of right now, uh, I can certainly see why Russia would do so with this type of escalation of uh, military hardware being put uh, on the Donetsk People's Republic doorstep. And it was actually supposedly used already this weekend. I've seen some of the video footage and it has been believed by um, the, uh, by the Donetsk uh, uh, military there that this is actually being used by uh, Ukraine already. Those missile systems are being used. And of course, there were heavy losses uh, on their, their side. I think they, there was one estimate of 75 were killed uh, as a result already. Now, I don't know if that's just military or combined with the civilian population as well. Anyway, Russia deploys more troops to the border with Ukraine. This is according to the, uh, to the defense blog uh, news website right here. And uh, this was reported, uh, says, in Rostov region uh, in, the, in the Crimea have spotted deployment of military equipment convoy on the, of the Russian armed forces, the armored combat vehicles, artillery cannons, electronic warfare as well vehicles, and trucks are moving to the Russian-Ukraine border. Uh, and that is, that is the case there. Now, whether or not this picture here is an actual one of those pictures, but perhaps so. I've seen the video footage of it already. Uh, that that the uh, the location of that though is still a good distance uh, in both cases. In Crimea, it's in uh, southern Crimea where they saw the convoy, and in Russia, uh, it's a good distance away. I would say like crossing the state of Alabama to be able to get to Ukraine, maybe a little bit larger than that. Not talking about the southern Alabama, but northern Alabama. So probably about 150 miles away. Uh, from the Ukrainian border. But it may be that the Russian military is moving in some more heavier equipment because of the stakes that these people are facing, uh, knowing that if they don't do something, it's going to be a total annihilation of, 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 of a race there on that side. Uh, Petro Poroshenko has clearly made it uh, known that he intends on a long uh, battle to retake the eastern part of Ukraine, and he will not stop until he has done so. Uh, that's going to be a lot of dead people if that ends up happening. Uh, also, Mikhail is also reporting that Russia has 30 plus crew members of MI8, MI24, and KA-52 helicopters district started combat training in the Elbrus Mountain region near Georgia. Um, you know, guys, what I'm concerned about that's going on here, and let me just show something here as well. This is another one here, the New Arab. Uh, the Houthi rebels are claiming that they have fired a Scud missile and hit Riyadh's military base. Uh, the Saudis are not claiming this, but of course the Saudis neither claimed nor denied uh, not too long ago where another Scud missile was sent uh, on their military base uh, that according to some uh, estimates killed 80 uh, Saudi uh, soldiers, or coalition uh, partners, that is. Uh, so the question is, is whether or not they, that this is the case or not, we don't really know. Uh, but again, going back to Russia, and now this is on Georgia, uh, the United States, uh, uh, along with the NATO allies, are as well moving more and more troops in different locations. A lot of things are being moved to Latvia. Um, and uh, as well as uh, the other places that they're moving their military there uh, from Poland to Latvia, it's the Germans, it's the United States. The Swedish government has now made an announcement uh, to the police. The police uh, commissioner over the entire uh, country of Sweden has told his uh, police uh, officers to be on war readiness alert, that they're anticipating a war with Russia. 
Guys, it's just not looking good. I'm, I'm hoping to go into this a little bit more tonight, um, come back on this when I can get back into my office at the house there uh, to kind of clarify some things for you because things are transpiring very rapidly. Um, I do not, I am not a war fear monger uh, of sorts of any kind whatsoever. Uh, also another one too, by the way, and I don't have this up, like I said, the battery was going dead, so I don't have much time right now, but I will do another broadcast tonight. Uh, Israel has also been struck by a missile coming in. Uh, I believe that is from Gaza, so uh, I don't know if there was any damages of yet. I'll do some more investigation on that. I think Israel's already retaliated uh, for that action as well. So I'll be bringing you up to date more late this evening as soon as I can put some more of this information together, especially to show you the troop movement. Uh, by the way, the United States also has moved into Romania, uh, which is south of Ukraine. And uh, so it's just like, it looks like that Ukraine is going to, is going to definitely be the igniting point. Uh, if there ends up being a war with Russia, that looks like that's going to be the igniting point. I do not see Russia pulling back. I don't think Trump really wants this to happen. I think that President Trump wanted to lift the sanctions off of Russia, uh, even without the Crimean issue being there, but uh, he's under a tremendous amount of pressure. You have to remember, it's not the president that runs the country. We can clearly see that after one federal judge can override the president of the United States, uh, as well as what we saw inside of Israel. Uh, the Supreme Court was able to, able to override uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and his, his entire cabinet ministry there in order to evict the citizens of Amona, something that was encouraged under Ariel Sharon uh, to be, for these settlements to be built, was financed by, helped financed by the government, and yet the Supreme Court can overrule any leader whatsoever. And even in the United States, a federal judge carries more weight than the President of the United States. I'm concerned that conflict could grow and escalate even in the U.S. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.